What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with immersive engineering. Now I've been doing a ton of work off camera. You guys can probably tell what it is. I'll give you a hint. It's right in front of us. So I was expanding this farm. Like I said, I was, uh, I pretty much just mirrored it over and added one more layer to each side. So we're now rocking three layers for hemp, three for sugarcane, and the hemp isn't fully grown yet. So we're not getting full harvests. So I can't really make a good judgment call on how much hemp we're going to need or how many more layers we need for that side. But the sugarcane seems to be going really well. Obviously, we're going to get more than we were from the previous farm, mainly just because on both sides we have significantly more planted than we did before. So uh, there are a couple of pros and cons and things that I want to discuss about this. But first things first, I want to tell you guys what we're actually going to be doing today once we finish talking about the farm. And uh, it's actually going to be pretty fun. So if you take a look at my inventory, you can see I got a bunch of different building blocks in here for multi-block structures. No, I did not actually go and build all of these. These are actually all the blocks from our basement with our old diesel generator setup. And we're going to be resetting it up out here. We're going to be making some changes to it, optimizing it, and trying to get the best diesel generator setup we possibly can, mainly so that we can start getting the excavator running. So that is going to be going right out here. And do not worry if you have watched the other episodes with the setup in it for the old diesel generator. Uh, there is going to be a lot of new stuff that we're going to work in here. You can see that I do have my favorite item in my inventory right now, the item router. So we're going to be using that, and uh, it should be relatively interesting. So, you know, I don't think you guys will be super bored, but uh, yeah, this should be uh, probably the best setup that we can get. So now that I've, you know, kind of explained what we're going to be doing today and rambled for a solid 30 seconds, uh, I can tell you guys the pros and cons of this farm, what I think, and then we can jump into the diesel generator setup. So... Uh, this farm is great. I really like how it's easy to tile up. It's not super expensive. All you got to do is set up the timer at the bottom and everything else is just, you know, 15 pistons per layer, some torches and, you know, some glass and random blocks, essentially. That's really it. Obviously, you need glowstone for the hemp because it needs a pretty high light level. But other than that, uh, it's really cheap to do. It doesn't take up much space because it tiles going straight up and... Uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. That's what I would say. But there are some cons, and you've probably already noticed them as I've just kind of been staring at it. You do get some blocks, and when I say some, that's kind of an understatement. There are a lot of blocks that get stuck on the dirt, and they start glitching out where you see them falling, like right here. This is a perfect example. You see this one just keep getting kicked off there and going back up, and that just means that it's stuck like right on the edge of one of these blocks up here. So it is by no means lossless, but it works for now, and you know there may be some improvements we can make upon it. I don't know why that sugar cane is stuck in there, but uh, yes, it is. So you know there are a couple things about it that annoy me a little bit, but it is significantly better than you know any farm I've used up until this point. And on top of that, it looks really cool. Like this thing looks awesome. So once we start tiling this up really high and get like you know 15 layers on it, it's going to be sweet. Uh, and if you're wondering what this is right here. I do have the dimensional anchors mod installed, so pretty much what this is going to do is just load these chunks around my base. Obviously, I'm not on a server, so I can load unlimited chunks here, and I'm not super worried about loading chunks and causing lag, because I can probably load as many chunks as I want without having any lag, so probably just going to end up putting this right in the center of wherever my base ends up being. Obviously, the main base is over there, but we want this to always be loaded. So it'll probably end up somewhere over there eventually, just loading this whole area, this whole stony plateau. But now we can actually jump into the whole setup of the diesel generator. So we're going to obviously start off doing the fermenter and the squeezer because those are going to be what this outputs right into. So we'll leave this chest here for now. And eventually when I break it, I'll just throw everything into the you know fermenter or squeezer, whichever one it is. So we're going to break the dimensional anchor for now. We'll put it back down later, but we're over here, so it doesn't really matter. And one thing I want to do real quick is I want to go to music and sound. And I just want to turn this down a little bit because these pistons are going to be constantly firing and it might get a little annoying. So, um, you know, if I decide it's still too loud, I'll put it down a little bit more later, but it should be okay for now. So I'm going to get rid of this infinite water pool right here. And I think we can probably put them right about, I'll try and keep it one away from this. So right about here, and I'm going to try and keep this as compact as possible. So that's why I'm keeping them so close. So we're going to put them right here. And you guys may notice that this is going to be a very similar pattern to the steel or the automatic steel producing setup that we had because the item router is great when you have to input it into two things like this because I can just slap it down right there, feed everything into it and just send it to whichever side it needs to go to. So that's exactly what we're going to do once we get this done. 
Just gotta put the light engineering blocks on the top again. Now, if you're watching this and you haven't seen my other videos and you're curious that like about certain portions of this, I did do videos on each of these individually and automating them and then the refinery and the diesel generator itself all individually. So you can go watch that if you do need a little bit more in depth on the explanation. But you know, this is for people who have already kind of seen those. So we're going to form these. And now we need to put down the where is it the item router. So right over here, oh my gosh, I forgot which one's which. I want to say this one's the fermenter and this one's the squeezer. I think that's a pretty safe bet. You know how we can tell real quick? We can just do this. Fermenter, blue block. This is the fermenter and this is the squeezer. So we're going to put down the item router right here, right in between them. And if we take a look at it, this means that this is west. Oh gosh, which means I want to say the other side's east. Yes, so, uh, oh gosh, I'm spacing out right now east so north east south west so we're going to want to send the where are they the industrial hemp seeds to the south i want to say yeah so we want to send those to the south and we want to get some sugar cane in here and we want to send that north yep that should be it so those will go over here the seeds will go over here they'll both get put in there and so what we can do now just to make sure that i'm not stupid and you know forgetting I don't even know what you'd call those. I don't remember what they're called. I'm the, I don't even know. Just to make sure I'm not getting messed up. There's a name for them. I don't remember what it is, but we'll put this down. Actually, this will all get picked up once I break this and put one of these down. So we can do that. We can kick it up here. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? Why did it? That was stupid. Okay, well, we can do that, and we can just toss this in here and verify that it's going into the correct one. Yes, that should be the correct one. I believe the fermenter, yeah, it definitely does. So the fermenter uses these sugar canes. So we can get all of this in there and we can throw in the industrial hemp seeds. And the one last thing that we need to do is we got to take one of these chests and we got to put it down right up here, which is going to be labeled as the top. And we are going to put this industrial hemp fiber in there. So whatever that's collected, it'll get thrown in here and kicked into this chest right up there. And we can periodically empty it. And I really don't care if we have a full chest of this, we're not going to need any more. All you really use it for would be windmills. Um, obviously, the regular windmill or the improved windmill. Um, you can use it for some decorative stuff. I guess I can show you what you can use this for. So you can use this for the tough fabric that's going to be used for the windmill. You can use it for hemp rope coil, which is just decorations. doesn't transmit power. For the hemp crete, which we actually may end up using. It actually looks kind of cool. I may use that for the floor in my base. Not too sure. And then you can also... Whereas at shapeless crafting, you can put three and make string. So uh, there are a couple uses for it, but it's not going to be anything that we need a ton of. So whenever this gets harvested, it should get thrown into whichever side it needs to. And then we can pull it out this side. I will not power them just yet. I'm going to decide how I want to power them later, just because I there's a couple options that I'm going to have, whether I want to pull it from our base or if I want to kind of loop the whole setup so the diesel generator is going to be powering these. I really haven't decided yet, I'll have to test it out, but uh, for now I do need to kind of bring this up a layer or two, and I hope you guys noticed I did go down and put a ton of torches down, I took like two stacks out here because I, I didn't realize actually how bright they make it, so we can pretty much work out here like at night whenever, so I don't actually need to worry about sleeping, so I think bringing this up one more should be fine for now. And we got to put the torches back down right around here, so we don't need to worry about a creeper coming and blowing up on us. Would have been that would be classic Doctor Raychard move right there, guys. Classic. So now we're gonna need the light engineering blocks, some heavy engineering blocks, and some steel scaffolding, and these 24 sheet metal blocks. And we're actually also going to need some fluid pipes because these are gonna get hooked up right here. Now I'm trying to think of how we want to do this. I know how to actually assemble the whole thing, but I'm trying to think of where the inputs and outputs are going to be and how we want them. So we are going to be using the refinery, which I think we can, I guess we just have to go to heavy machinery, biodiesel, and go over, find the refinery. Okay, so right here's the refinery. Um, which one is going to be the front? The front is the heavy engineering block, and that is where you're going to pull the diesel out of. So we're going to want to set it up like this so that Heavy engineering block is going to want to be over here. And we're going to want some space in between these. I think we can do it like this. This should be fine. So we set it up like this. And 
Is it like that? If it is like that, then I must have missed out on some steel scaffolding. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Let's take a look in the book. Oh, there's heavy engineering blocks right here and on the other side. Okay. Forgot about that. I was going to say I should have the exact amount of blocks needed for each portion of this. So then the heavy engineering block should go over here, light engineering block there. And now I believe it is just going to be the sheet metal blocks, which are going to go... Oh my gosh, Mr. Zombie. Please don't spawn any friends. Is there anything else around here? Nope, we're good to go. Yeah, so that looks like what it is. That's the first layer, so we got to make the second layer right there. Same thing on this side. And... Does, I think we probably want to whack it on this side right here. Yeah, okay, so that's good. So now we can just wrap these around like so. And that'll be good. And then we can pull whatever it generates in the terms of biodiesel out this side. Yeah, and then we can put a lever right here if we need to. I don't think I'll use a lever for this. All of this we're going to want to have running 24-7. The only thing we could throw a lever on if we really wanted to would be the actual diesel generator itself. But that one is actually going to stop itself whenever it can't send power anywhere. So I don't think we actually need to worry about that. So now I think I'm going to continue building up. The question is, do I build up over here or do I go somewhere else? Do I move over to the side a little bit? I think I just want to build up right over here to put the diesel generator down. Uh, not too sure. But the main reason that I'm building this outside, and this is, it's not really the main reason, but it's one of the reasons, is because, um, you know, being able to expand the farm is nice and all, but eventually, if I want to add more of these setups in terms of fermenters and squeezers and all that stuff, in case we ever do get too much coming from this farm, I don't think we ever will, but if we do, uh, it'll be nice to have all the room outside to work with. So uh, that's one of the, another good reason to have it outside, where you just kind of have almost unlimited room. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to keep it relatively compact is so that I don't take up much room with just one of these setups. So let's take a look at the diesel generator itself because I'm trying to think again about the input for this. So we're going to be inputting it right in one of these sides. So one of these sides, so I think what might be the best place to put it would actually be right over here. So if it's a three by five, one, two, three, four, five, that is actually perfect. So we can set it up We'll put it right here. I'll have some room to walk through it in the center. So we're going to have, gosh, I can't place blocks today. We're going to have these blocks going like this. And we're going to want to make sure that we put down the generator blocks on this side. Because the generator blocks go on the side that you want the input and power output to be on. Gosh, I legitimately can't place blocks today, guys. And then this side is where the radiator blocks are going to go, which essentially has nothing on it. So this side is, this side's the lame side. This side's the loser side. And we're gonna come over here, click on it, and there we go. So now we can throw the lever back down, turn it on and off. You guys remember your lesson: off, on, off, on, off, on. Okay, now that you guys know that again, just just gotta verify that you guys know that. So this whole system should actually be set up now. We need to start wiring power to stuff though. And I do have the high voltage capacitor right here, which before we had hooked up to this, and I can't even jump up there because this isn't a full block, but before we had it hooked up to this, and so what I'm trying to figure out here is if I want to pull power from my base and bring it over here to power these. Uh, I also could set up some water wheels strictly to power the fermenter and the squeezer and the refinery. Uh, so there's, there's a couple options that I'm weighing in my head. The main reason that I don't want to use the power that I'm getting, or at least for now, the power that I'm getting from the diesel generator is because until we hook it up to the excavator, it's not going to be generating power 24 seven. So I feel like with these burning, you know, 80, whatever, 80 RF, every time they cook something down, uh, I don't want it to be flicking on and flicking off repeatedly and just kind of going like, it'll be really annoying if it does that. So I'm thinking what we're going to do for now is just take a really long just like wiring all the way over here from our base. And there's actually a relatively cool way we can do this. So you guys are gonna get to see my, my building ideas right now. And we're just gonna try and not get ambushed by the zombies. Yep, okay, so we do have a lot of creosote upstairs and we got some of these treated wood planks. So we're gonna get some wood, we got these, and you know, we have some buckets on us so we can do this. 
Now, one thing I want to point out in the comments, you guys have probably seen uh, a couple of people have been spitballing ideas with me about better ways to optimize this. And so eventually we will be doing another video on this system and it's going to be fully optimized. There's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be wicked complicated, way more complicated than it needs to be, but it is going to be awesome. So you guys can expect to see that relatively soon. I'm pretty hyped for it. Uh, okay. Whoa. Did we like glitch it out? Where'd our last bucket go? We definitely just lost a bucket. One, two, three. Do we lose two buckets? What? Oh my gosh, where I don't even know where they went. Oh, what? Why did it pop out down the Oh, because this is kicking them out right over here. I forgot. I was trying to click it too fast. You know what, bucket? I don't even like you. I don't know why. Three buckets are the best. We don't need four or five. Just wasted six iron. That's how rich I am. Okay, so let's get some wood out here. And this should be enough. Right there, right there. Okay, so what we're going to be making right now is going to be, let's get the immersive engineering stuff up. We are going to be making these wooden posts, which are really awesome. So we need some stone brick and some treated wood fence, which is really easy to make. We actually have some treated wood sticks already to make some fences, but we're gonna need a good amount of these. So we'll make uh, four more sets, I think. I know we need to make there we go so this will this will make it so we don't have any sticks left over so we got these that'll make us five that should be good now these are really awesome they look really funny when they're in your hand because like take a look at how small they are that's they're like three or two or three blocks high but they look really small in your hand it's pretty funny but what we're going to be doing is i think we're going to want to kick it out this side so we're going to have to break this right here and reverse the side that it's placed on i'm trying not to get stuck in the conveyor belts so let's get our medium voltage wire connectors, medium voltage wires out. So we're gonna throw this right back down right there, kick it over to this thing again. We can go back upstairs and bring power to it up here too. And connect it like this, there we go. So now we can actually start wiring this outside. So what we're gonna do is break this block right here so that we have access to outside. Hello, Mr. Zombie. I don't know why you're not trying to break the door down. This is this is hard, right? Yeah. Okay, you should be trying to break the door down there. I don't know why, but I'm okay with it. So now that we can wire this out here, uh, we're going to be taking these wooden posts, and I'm actually going to... This is going to look a little bit weird, guys, but we're going to build this up wherever we're using it. So I kind of want to wire it, like, right here. So if we're wiring it right here, actually, we need to build up one over... So let's take a look, we'll throw it down like this and then put this post down and it's going to be a little bit hard to, to access it. Let's get some dirt out here too because I don't want to waste more stone. You can kind of pillar up. So if you take the engineer's hammer on this and you click on it, it extends this arm and then you can take this arm and you can throw a medium voltage wire connector, you can throw lights, you can throw all this stuff on it. Oh my gosh, that doesn't look good. I'm forgetting how you effectively attach these. What What is... Something was hitting me there. There's some way to effectively attach these right here to make this thing look good. I'm trying to remember. I think it, I thought it extended out the bottom somehow. It can definitely flip. You can definitely flip this right here to make it, to make it go a different way. I'm just trying to think how you do it. Well, you know what? You guys get the idea for now. Eventually you could get it so it's upside down like that. And I used to do that with lights at my base on the unabridged server but this should be this is is this the same level there i don't think it is so maybe i want to bring it up one more maybe not though so this would be the layer that that would be on yeah okay so we'll leave it like this just so that it's level with the ground over there we can get the medium voltage wire out and start hooking this up let's see if i can access that i cannot i gotta take some dirt over here and we're gonna have to eat in a second too I went out and burned some cows earlier. So you wire it like that, and I, I just, that's, oh, okay, so it flipped. You see it flipped there. I don't know why it flipped there. Maybe I needed to hook something up to it, but it flipped. So that looks really cool. It's just kind of like a, not like a telephone pole, but almost. It's like a semi, it's like a wannabe telephone pole. Uh, where's our food? Am I being, am I blind right now? It's right here, okay. I was being blind. I wasn't gonna let the food get the best of me. Could've eaten some of the zombie flesh if I needed to, but you know. 
we got a bunch of this nice cooked steak in our inventory okay so obviously we're just like we got this stone right here why not just throw it down like that uh because we're not going to need it for anything else so these can travel a total of 16 blocks so obviously it's going to be more than 16 blocks to get over here so we're going to come right over here and we're gonna hmm I think right here we can kick it up let's see if this looks like a maybe right maybe right here maybe right here yeah so right here so whenever you're doing this you're always going to want to skew these one off of where you're actually setting things up because it's going to extend an arm out in this direction so pro building tips from Ray Chard, you know, classic. And got to get our wires out again. I need to like keep the important stuff on my bar right now. I just keep flipping between it. See, I don't know why this like flip, flippy stupid thing. Flip, flip. I don't know why it flipped last time. I was I was just like not even looking at it flipped. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so now that we have it like this, we can carry this right over here and place it like that. What if we like, no, just kick this out again, place it like that. Can this, no, we can't get it to flip down. It's so stupid. Stupid. Oh, you know what? But this isn't going to be even high enough for that. So we might have to move this back one. We might actually have to make this one higher just because you can see that it actually doesn't get us all the way up here. I don't know if it'll, obs if it'll say that it's obstructing the view. Let's do some parkour, get up here. So this is going to go right there. Let's see if we can bring this up there. Ooh, we can. Awesome. So we can get this right there. Hook these up and get some power to this guy. Hmm. How do I want to do this? I got to get power down there. Oh. Last time I had one right in the center here. Man, that's awkward. That's awkward power-wise. Uh, I don't suppose I can get this to this. Let's. Might as well try it. Yeah, there's, there's almost no way that that was going to work. Um, that's such a weird spot to have to put power. You know what? Do we have we have some stone bricks on us? Let's just do this. Let's essentially do the same thing that we did before. Got a shift click on that. Get one right up there. And we have just enough of these to get it working. Hopefully we have enough wire. We do indeed have enough wire. We can wire this, wire this and wire that. So now this should all be working. Looks like everything's already been made down into these plant oil, ethanol. Of course we're gonna have more ethanol than plant oil. Uh, this is definitely, this has still got a ton to cook down. But then this will get sent over here and now we can finally hook this thing up. Man, that is so loud. But I just love watching this stuff float down. That is great. Let's watch the harvest of this. Hmm. I would say mediocre at best. I'm going to need a lot more layers on this side. Okay, but now, now that we have this stuff going over here, we got the on-off switch going, everything is good, so we can start hooking this up using the high-voltage wire connector. I think this time, we're probably, we can still use this one right here. And once again, we can throw the high-voltage capacitor down somewhere. Uh, one thing that we could do is just manually throw this down over there to test it out. But for now, man, these still haven't flipped. We're gonna have to figure out how to flip those. Uh, but for now, I'm kind of hesitant to do that just because it's gonna burn through the power in this really fast. So eventually I'm gonna have to figure out a better way to transport this. We're gonna need to use the relays. We're gonna need to be using a lot of these posts for the relays because I, like I said last time, they need to be flipped upside down. Um, just in case you guys didn't know, uh, the high voltage wire connectors can only be used for input and output and direct connection so right here if I were to throw this capacitor down like we'll throw it right over here for now uh, this side right here is where let's just let's get out our hammer and just make this side the input okay so that side's input you can look for the blue dot and we can take some of this high voltage wire connector put it right here okay so this works because this is an input this is an input and if I were to hook this up to this side, wherever the output is, the output is on no side right now. If I were to make it output side and hook this up, it would work fine because uh, they use, they're used as input and output. But you can't use them like we're using these connectors over here to connect two sets of wires. You need to use relays for that. Uh, so you do need to make a separate block. These will not work as that. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're using some high voltage wires. 
Um, so that's what we're going to have to do. And they do need to be flipped upside down. You can't have them on the ground like this. They need to be hanging from something, which is where these are going to come in handy. But these are looking real gross. See, this one didn't flip yet, but this one flipped and that one flipped. Why isn't this one flipping? This one's stupid. I'm going to flip this thing off. But everything should be working over here. And we should just check to make sure that stuff's all going in this chest. Yes, very nice, very nice. So guys, I will continue working on expanding the farms off camera, trying to optimize it. And if I ever make any changes, I will let you guys know. And if you have any questions about the farm, feel free to post in the comments. There were a couple things that were confusing on Mumbo's video if you did watch it. So, uh, you know, if you are confused about any of those things, hopefully I will be able to answer the questions for you. Or if you have any questions about the diesel generator setup in general, feel free to let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope it was informative and I hope it wasn't too boring for those of you who watched the other like four episodes we did setting all this stuff, uh, stuff up individually. But this should be most likely the most optimized and compact setup you can get aside from, you know, maybe shortening down this a little bit to make it closer or closer. But, you know, this is going to be the setup we're rocking for a while. So if you enjoyed the video, found it informative, feel free to give it a like and I will talk to you guys later.